Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Community level action is a great way of contributing to sustainable development. This week on Learning World, we explore educational projects in Malta, USA and Brazil, teaching people how to preserve the environment by making the best use of natural resources. Malta's electricity supply comes from fossil fuels, most of which are imported into the country. So learning to save electricity is vital for the environment. One school has started promoting energy efficiency in the classroom. Malta is the only EU member state which depends entirely on fossil fuels for energy, 100% of which is imported. While sustainable energy sources are developing, educating people about energy efficiency is crucial for the island. Here in St. Francis Primary School, they joined an EU-funded project called U4 Energy. The approach is practical and multifaceted. Good teaching practice is rewarded, as well as concrete measures to improve energy efficiency at school, in the family and the community. The children take it in turns to check water and electricity meters and make sure that fans, lights and appliances are not left on when not required. There's no, no fans on right here. From the parents' point of view, we had a very positive answer. The simple fact that at times parents complained with me because their, their children didn't let them put on certain appliances when in fact there was need to be on for us. It was a great achievement. St. Francis Primary School is now top of the class at both national and European level when it comes to energy efficiency. In terms of impact, uh, what we've seen is really a number of success stories across Europe. So this school, St. Francis Primary, here in Malta, is clearly one of them, with over 20% energy savings just in the first competition here. But if we focus more on the European level, I think that U for Energy has contributed to really bringing the importance of sustainability education, energy efficiency education, to the forefront. Forests can protect against climate change, but they are also victims of global warming like these woods in the US which are amongst the world's biggest carbon sponges. One project there helps landowners recognize ecological threats and teaches them new ways of preserving their forests. Let's have a look. The forests in the east of the United States are one of the largest carbon sponges in the world a powerful natural defense against climate change. So protecting these trees is vital. I feel like I don't know any, you know, for as much as I should, I don't know anything about trees. So I could, I could probably tell a pine, well, I'm sure I can tell a pine tree from a hardwood tree, but beyond that, when I look at two different trees, I don't know what's what. Looking after a forest doesn't leave much time for going back to school, so Cornell University has gone into the woods. They aim to educate all 650,000 private forest owners in the New York State. Cornell produces a lot of knowledge. Our goal is to put that knowledge in the hands of the forest owners in their woods. It's in their woods that the, the easy flow of communications happens and the volunteer can actually see um, the condition of the trees or the condition of the land. It would have rounded low. Jerry Michael is one of the 140 forest education volunteers. He came to see Dean Jordan's wood and help assess its sustainability and harvesting possibilities. Hardwood logging done the wrong way can seriously damage a forest. 
Yep. You can actually predict what's going to be left after the harvest. Is there going to be enough trees for another sustainable harvest 15 years down the road? Are there enough trees left to provide seed for the next forest? The world's forests absorb more than a quarter of the carbon dioxide in the air. But forests don't only fight climate change, they're one of its victims too. In the US, for example, warm winters mean less insects are killed by frost, leaving more of them to eat the trees. Cornell University has trained the volunteers and they, in their turn, try to encourage forest owners to pass on their newly acquired knowledge to other forest owners. The mission is to take the research assets of the university and, and uh, share them with the community at large. Brazil is taking steps to counter an amnesty law for loggers. To preserve the Amazonian rainforests, a campaign is now promoting reforestation and encouraging indigenous people to protect their natural heritage. Let's find out more. Forty years ago, this entire region in northwest Brazil was covered with Amazonian forest. Today, Illegal deforestation has replaced it with fields. We've begun supervising and protecting our land from the illegal loggers. But we also want to use our land in a responsible way. Almir is a local tribal leader. Since 2007, his community of 1,400 people have been working to conserve their part of the Amazonian forest. Here we are in a reforestation zone where we have replanted. These young plants will help to replace the lost biodiversity and enrich the forest, which is part of our land. The community contacted Google Earth for help in mapping their territory by satellite so that they could more easily expel illegal loggers and replant the forest. Today, they are the first community in the world to have received international certification allowing them to sell CO2 credits to polluting countries. The money from selling carbon credits amounts to around a million euros a year until at least 2038. This forest does a lot of good for humanity. So we're doing good too. No one is selling the forest. No one is selling our land. We're simply selling the good that the forest does naturally. The community want to finance the protection of the forest as well as improving their own lifestyles. It's a great result for us. Among our projects, there's even one to encourage eco-sustainable tourism. But our priority is protecting the forests and improving things for the people here. In the future, this community also plans to share what they've learned with other communities living in the Brazilian jungle. Well, that's it for now. And before we go, do you think schools are doing enough to raise awareness on sustainable development? Let us know about your experience. See you again next week. Goodbye. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.